Florida right now. And what we've done, the half fee, is a program y'all can go onto the computer and actually pull down all of our information we've got. We put out the educational part for uh, EMS, first responders, people that need to be the ones in charge and helping the general public. Uh, when it first happened, we had beekeepers out there that never messed with Africanized bees and all they were telling the general public was to kill all the bees. You don't need that. We like to say the friendly bees are the ones in the white boxes, the African bees are the ones in the trees because we can't distinguish between them. That's who's in charge of our program. If you think about the Africanized bees, there's actually our European Apis uh, mellifera, which is actually the species is Apis. And your subspecies are all the ones that you see here. Your Africanized bee that was brought in by Dr. Kerr is actually Scutellatus, which is right there in the middle part of Africa. It was a more defensive bee. Now there is actually one that's probably a little more aggressive if you want to class it, but it did produce honey in that area. The reason it was brought down into South America was to try to boost their production. It still produces honey, it still pollinates. You can't distinguish it between a European bee and a, the Scutellatus because they're in the same Apis mellifera. And the difference is a scutellatus. So if you want to count the 23 different subspecies there, most of them we can't tell the difference besides their coloration. Now, when you do the wing measurements and everything, we do what's called uh, FABUS, which is where we measure its fast African identification system that we use. We measure the wings. You use 10 wings, you come up with a general <coughs> number. That number will tell you the probability that it's African or probability of European. Problem also with probability is that with our feral swarms that are here, that have been here for the last 350 years, those end up being normally small wings because they adapted to that area that they're in. Uh, so, I guess I got aim. This is where Kerr brought it into there. He chose the most what he did, he looked at the area that would be most likely uh, the same plane and brought it across. It took uh, about 20 years to get up into the Panama and across. When I worked them in Costa Rica, that was in 87, 88. They were into there, 89 I guess was actually. They were a little grumpy there. Uh, this is Texas area, California. Now they're into Louisiana. The two more years, they moved over more into this area right in here. Uh, probably in the next uh, two, three years, they'll come on across into Florida, finally. Even though they're in Florida, they came in by introductions of bees being on ships. And that's most likely the way you'll end up getting them into Atlanta places in the middle part of Georgia. Your ones that are coming in to Florida right now, if you look at where the I-4 corridor goes from Tampa to Daytona, that's where we're seeing the Africanized bees are at right now. Uh, and when I say Africanized, that means they're the hybrid still. We have some more pure lines down in the Fort Myers and Miami area. Uh, we can't by using full morphometrics, we can tell whether the percentage of you know, Africanized to uh, European, but you can't say that they're pure line African. You can tell by their defensive nature that the way they react, they're a lot more defensive of their hive than our normal European bees down there. So if you look at the I-4, that's where they're cutting off right now. We have a couple that we found above that but there's some characteristics that you're seeing with small little swarms almost all like from springtime to the end of July. You'll see little small swarms coming out of hives. That's a distinct character of Africanized bees. So 
this is what we're showing there. Uh, Florida, two you just barely can see that. And the reason we have Alachua County is actually a beekeeper came up from down in the pan, the very bottom edge of the state, carried the hive all the way up, called the beekeeper or a bee inspector from Alachua County and said, hey, I think these bees are a little aggressive. So uh, he went over and took a sample. And those have actually been probably the most highly Africanized ones that we've had. And those actually came out of uh, Lauderdale area. So uh, that told us then, beekeepers are gonna transport them. So beekeepers have to make up their mind if they want a bee that's gonna cause them law problems, being lawyers fighting against them, or if they're gonna speak up and say, hey, I need to requeen this, or whatever, <coughs> get rid of them. So, uh, this is what our population increase has been in our colonies that we've been looking at. And most of the hives, we, we do a BMP, better management practice, where we take and when our inspectors come, you can voluntarily take and say you're going to do better management practices. In better management practices, it says that you will requeen your hive uh, roughly every six months with a known European line. Known European line means you're getting it out of an area like uh, from Wilbanks or somewhere where there's no African bees around there or that the genetic line we can trace back, meaning that the mother line was from, and I hate to say California because California has the African bee, but the northern part of California where that mother line and the person raising those queens is a certified European stock, meaning that his drone line has been looked at to be, uh, or he is raising drones that come from a certified stock. So that's our best management practice we can do as beekeepers, so that when you go out to your pollination or put the bees out there for honey production, you can say, look, to the best of my abilities, I'm trying to keep European stock. A beekeeper doesn't want to run African bees. Your advantages are not there. I mean, it's sort of like running a Yugo car compared to a Ford pickup truck. There's no way I'm going to get in a Yugo, but I'll run European stock. So that's what's happened on our percentage of Africanized bees right now. Uh, how many of y'all can look at the bees up there and tell which one's African, which one's European? None of us. Mainly because they look identical because they're a subspecies. Uh, like I said, where we do our either uh, wing morphometric or wing measurements, Fabus, or we do full morphometrics. Full morphometrics takes us about four hours to dissect 10 bees. You've got to mount them. You mount them on the uh, slide. Then you've got to allow that slide to either put in an oven and dry it, or you've got to, if you want to try to wet measure it, you're going to get the stuff all over you. Uh, it takes 30, 36, 39 measurements that we do. So 390 measurements uh, have to be put into a computer. The computer comes out and tells us which one it was. Uh, the main problem that you got with general public is teaching them to be aware. And if you'll notice on the back of this, it's got my picture. Actually, y'all can't see me. But that's, me in the white there. Uh, beware facts, I think. I don't have my glasses on. Beware, the main thing, there's actually another flyer we hand out a lot of times. It tells people where to look for bees, African or European. They're nesting sites. When you think of Africanized bees, they nest anywhere. They like to be low to the ground, where European bees normally like to be above, like four to five feet above. Uh, they like to be in a dry area. Your African bees, they nest anywhere. They will go in badger holes. Now you can tell that's not from Florida. But the uh, hole in the ground and the walls, they underneath uh, uh, trailers, anywhere. They love to nest. This is actually a person getting a free hanging swarm out. That's one other characteristic it seems to be more prevalent in the African bee, they will go ahead and free swarm. Telephone poles, bird nests, uh, a 
around your electrical outlets, they love to be in those areas. If you notice the foam that's on these, these are our trained pest removers, uh, PCOs we call pest control officers. They are actually being trained now how to take care of bees. You don't go out there at 10 o'clock in the morning to spray down a hive of bees because if you upset that hive of bees or a non-trained uh, exterminator goes over there, he upsets them thinking he can remove them out of that wall, he'll find out that you've upset the whole neighborhood, maybe two blocks worth of bees. In Florida right now, we've had, I think it's 30-something dogs, cats, and chickens that have been killed by them. 